everyone, thank you so much for joining me today for another video in the Distress Ink and Oxide Colour Combination Series. Today we're going to be looking at Shaded Lilac, which is the palest of the lilacs almost. Um, I'll explain that in a moment. Um, but in my mind, the palest of the uh, purples. And we're going to be comparing it with other purples that are in the Distress range. We're also going to be looking at how the label fares as well. Do we think it's an accurate kind of... Um, representation of what that color is. Then we're going to be working through two different color combinations that you can follow along with at home. We've got one including an additional two colors and one including an additional three colors as well. So hopefully you can take some inspiration from this. If you do, I'd love it if you could give me a thumbs up and of course subscribe to my channel if you like videos like this. We have a whole host of the Distress Oxide colors over in the playlist. I'll link that at the end for you. So the first thing we're going to do is swatch this color. Now if you Follow along with these videos regularly, you'll know that I was uh, washing my brushes just recently and I'm pleased to say the washing technique that I use that I have uploaded into a short on YouTube, so you can find that, it actually worked really, really well. So I've now got all of my brushes, which was nearly a hundred of them, um, all clean. Uh, I just need to relabel them. I didn't think about that. The labels did come off in the wash, um, but that's fine. Some of them could have done with being restuck down anyway. So this is Shaded Lilac. It is a beautiful lilac, almost towards a blue colour. So obviously the ink pad is a little bit darker, um, but you can see here, I think the label is a pretty accurate representation of what that colour is once it's blended. Now we often find that, or sometimes find, that the label is much darker, much lighter, a slightly off colour to uh, what we find it is once we, we've blended it. But I think this is really important because if you are looking online or you're looking in a shop, you can only see the label. So um, it's good to know whether that is accu accurate uh, and whether that's actually the colour you're going to be getting. So then coming along to the distress chart. Now, everything I'm using is linked down below. That includes the inks, the oxides, the brushes, the blending mat even. But I've also linked down below this chart for you. So it's a link you can pop to. So that's on my blog. Uh, it's free for you to download. It's not filled in for you. You'll need to fill this in at home. But it's a really good way of seeing which colours you've already got and which ones you still need to collect. And then you can look at them uh, at a glance in some colour groups. So this is Shaded Lilac just here. Um, I must admit straight away I can already see that the colours around it are Seedless Preserves, much more pink, um, and Wilted Violet, obviously much more, uh, much brighter purple, more of a warm purple as well. Dusty Concord, much, much darker. Uh, Milled Lavender isn't too far, but it's getting towards the pinks, which is why I said I feel like Shaded Lilac is one of the palest purples because I think milled lavender although it's called lavender it almost goes towards pink rather than a purple I mean that's completely your choice which way you feel about it but I, I don't think there's anything comparable let's just pop here uh, let's just pop to the blues only because I feel like this is a bit more blue than um, some purples so when we look at the blues actually Again, there's nothing really, really close here. So I think some of these blues, so maybe faded jeans, is more like a darker version of this colour. But it's still a purple, just about. So let's pop this chart to the side. Now you can see that actually there's nothing that I would say um, is comparable within the range. So it is definitely a standalone. And let's do some of these colour combinations. Now I've popped Shaded Lilac in the centre here um, because I'm going to put Speckled Egg and Wilted Violet either side of it. Now the reason I've chosen these colours is because Wilted Violet is definitely getting towards a pinky purple, so it's definitely a warm purple. Um, Shaded Lilac is a cool purple, but both being purples they'll blend nicely into each other. And then because we've gone cool we can easily go into blues or even greens, so I've gone with Speckled Egg as a nice cool blue to go into. So let's take the Wilted Violet and put this on the end, first of all. Now I'm going to be going round in small circles. In fact, I'm going to grab my strip of cardstock. This is just a piece of folded over cardstock that I tend to use for holding my cardstock still. Um, some people like to use post-it notes, that sort of thing, um, or something low tack. I do have tips uh, that I've given you on my channel before for using things like old um, electronic cutting mats, for example, electronic machine cutting mats, um, to stick these onto. 
but actually I just find this really simple just a folded up piece of cardstock that you can sandwich your piece between you're not going to get any ink transfer and you're not going to get any greasy fingers or anything like that onto your ink blending either now the little fray bits you can see there are actually coming from my paper so I think it could be out of the brush actually because of course the labels did all get washed off in the machine um, unfortunately and I did get residue of paper all over the bristles I had to clean those out once they were dry so that actually could be that I was thinking it was that frayed piece of edge paper there it could be that also um, my trimmer needs the blade replacing so I've got a slightly feathered edge there so it could be one or or the other either way uh, so you can see how beautifully wilted violet works into shaded lilac now I'm going to risk losing my shaded lilac if I don't wipe my mat and um, put some more of that down and when I'm ink blending um, I used to say it in the earlier videos I stopped mentioning it but in case you're new whenever I wipe my blending mat I always dry it off first just because the moisture will react with these particular inks and we don't want that we want a nice smooth blend so as I say I'm going to put down a little more shaded lilac so I don't lose that color because this is the focal point for us and if I'm going to add some color I'm going to start in the middle where it's solid and then I'm going to start blending out and there we go that's a bit better so there's a bit more there and then we're going to go into speckled egg so lifting up speckled egg pop this start at this end because this is where I'd like the color to be solid as in not blended in at all start here and then start working up now when you do first wash your brushes or you have brand new brushes it does take a short while for the ink to really start building up on those bristles so just bear with it keep applying it and keep blending and going back and adding more ink and gradually you'll find that your bristles will just hold the ink much better as you almost sort of prime them so just going up to the edge of the lilac there again small circles we're always working in circles we never do any sort of swiping then I'm going to come back to my shaded lilac and I'm just going to particularly touch this corner because that seemed to go a little bit a little bit lower and I don't think I really have much more blending to do there I think that's absolutely beautiful so you can see where we've got the damp patch there from the wilted violet that is a quite a new ink pad in comparison to some of the others so it's juicier so it's just taking a little bit longer for that dye element of the ink to soak in now if you're wondering what I mean by that these oxides are created or the makeup is dye and pigment they're like a hybrid ink pad so um, if you want more details on that I do have a video I'll actually link that just here for you to explain the difference between distress oxides and distress inks and that does talk about the dye and the pigment element of them so there's our first color combination really beautiful um, we'll have another look at that when it's dry at the end let's move on so give our mat a quick wipe and do the second color combination as well for this one I'm going to start with bundled sage at the end a beautiful pale green these are quite pale colors until uh, we get to the other end you'll see in a moment so starting with bundled sage building the color up when it's again new brush so it does need to start loading up the ink a bit more but also because it's such a pale color it seems to take a little bit longer to build up to so just we'll keep working over and over until you're happy with the amount that you've got down and most importantly that it's not patchy so just fading this out a little because I'm working with four colors for this one I will need to only cover around about a quarter of the strip for each color I'm going to go into the next one which is milled lavender again a very pale color hopefully you'll be able to see this okay though but I thought the pale green going into the pale milled lavender which I almost consider a pink rather than a purple um, I thought they would work quite well so I'm just going to lay this down you can see already how pale that is there we go going up to around about the halfway mark here and then I'm going to go into or up to the green then what I'll do is I'll go back to the green and I'll work on blending those two in now you can see here I've actually got some elements on the cardstock that are picking up the color more so you can see those there they're darker so this is just um, a variation within the cardstock 
so the cardstock's perfectly smooth but the way it's made up sometimes the fibers are a little uh, kind of more clumped together than others and they will hold on to the moisture from the dye part of the ink more so and you'll only really notice this when you're using very very pale colors um, but the idea with this just go over it a couple of times until you've got as much pigment sitting on top as possible and once you're happy with how much you've put down and you know you can't put any more on leave it to thoroughly dry now this might take 10-15 minutes once all the dye has actually dried then you should have a nice smooth finish so just going back to the bundled sage and I'm blending this in we've got a lovely kind of warm color coming through between the two beautiful okay so like I say, you've got a lot of texture there. If you're using a darker colour, you just won't see that. So now just turning this over, and because I'm now going to some slightly different colours, I'm going to give my mat a wipe and a dry. Pop these to the side for now. Now into our shaded lilac, which is definitely more of a blue-purple. I'm going to put this down first. You can see this is quite a new ink pad, can't you, straight away. So I'll put this down first just in this strip and then I'll work on the blending afterwards so I think I'm happy with a nice smooth amount there so now I'm going to work on the blending now because this is a stronger color than the milled lavender I'm going to start by working this up but I'm not going to go too far I'll then take over with my milled lavender brush still probably plenty of ink on here go into the milled lavender and then start working the other way and that just gives you this lovely blend between the two. Beautiful. Okay. So that still needs to dry, actually. Sometimes I just want to I take a look from a distance. And sometimes I think, still see a bit of a line there. I think I might just work that in a bit further. And I can go back and forth like this for quite some time sometimes. So sometimes I need to just tell myself to stop. Because actually, once you let it dry, it looks fabulous. So lastly, let's just... Take the excess off there without wiping it and let's go into another really quite strong color this is dusty concord so another purple we're going almost back to sort of the pinky purples here again got to load the brush up because it's brand new or not brand new but it's clean it's all clean the bristles have nothing on them yet Go, just working those circles up to the purple line and carefully in those small circles working over to the purple then I'm going to come back to the shaded lilac and go back again the same way as we did with the milled lavender perfect that's just blended that in really nicely now with the exception of needing that um, milled lavender there to dry and reduce that patchiness we've now got two completely different color combinations so let's look at the two of them there we go I think they're absolutely beautiful I particularly like this first one um, if you do love videos like this please do join me by watching the playlist and subscribing to my channel just here so you can find all those linked on the screen now and if you want to purchase any of the products that I've used you can pop along to craft stash through this link or the link in the description. Um, I do use affiliate links, but they don't charge you a penny and I'd make a small commission if you purchase anything.